The reality is is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Jesse Willis. I may not run in traffic, but I'll give you a run for your money. Rody. When you work in quality assurance, perfection comes easy. Tori Tuchilo. When Tori steps on the scene, you are his story. Eugene Henderson. In the game of life, I choose Jeopardy. Maria M. Where I come from, they sing God Save the Queen. The truth is, it's actually me. Becca Simon. If you can't stand the heat come to minnesota jill hirsch your petty drama can't take this warrior down jamie all some people call me cold but it's not me it's that minnesota weather sarah gibbs you may not like the cut of my jet but that's what you get from sarah gibbs richie d if you can't be cool you can't be with caduce megan shaw i may be a model but i'll never be a model minority samaj bledson the fun bus is here and i'm driving on the turn Mike. Eleanor Manning. I run with a fabulous circle of people, and they're not even on my payroll. Danny McLaughlin. First, I came out, and now I'm coming for everything. Kelly Paper. I may be from down under, but don't ever underestimate me. Seiran Hayati. In Sweden, we have ABBA, IKEA, and if you mess with me, some other four-letter words. Jessica Riley. Where I come from, money can buy you anything, but I'll take the garbage plate. Chastity Davis. Don't be fooled by my name. The only thing I abstain from is your bullshit. Sarah Watkins Bilstein. Playtime is over. This mom means business. Laura Zielinski. Whether it's breast pumping or fist bumping, this mama brings the party. Jill Walsh. I made it up the hill myself and I'll kick any jack off. And finally, diamonds aren't a girl's best friend. John Friedman is. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. today it's just newer um i've never done a solo episode on this podcast and honestly the thought of doing this makes me a little bit nauseous arthi is gone for a couple of weeks i was supposed to have guests today but i just couldn't get my shit together so it's just me and you know i'll try to i don't know make myself laugh i guess try to make you guys laugh try not to be too preachy but i probably will be uh, somebody left me that review once and it's kept me up all night. But you know what? It's who I am. Uh, we're talking about Real Houses of OC, New Jersey, and Miami. It's um, It was a lot. There was, you know, it was interesting. Between the three shows, there was just, as usual, my favorite thing ever, which is interpersonal relationships and how to be a good friend and what's right or wrong morally when it comes to your friend groups and your frenemies and all that stuff. So I just, I really enjoyed all three. Before we get started on that, for some reason, I don't remember what the thread was or why Arthi and I started talking about divorce and abortion like two episodes ago, but we talked about it and I said, you know, Islam allows both and I think it's the only Abrahamic religion that does. Well, I did hear some corrections and apparently that is not the case. Judaism has a protocol for both, which is wonderful. And uh, Christianity, somebody pointed out that while evangelical Christians and extremists nowadays, fundamentalists will try to push that that's, you know, very much against the word of God and all this stuff, that that's actually not written in any scripture, that it's not allowed. So the more you know, you know. So um, let's talk about Real Houses of New Jersey. We opened up this week on this fight back with Jen and Marge. Bill had the affair with the office manager. For two She's years. not an office manager. She was a f-ing pharmaceutical rep, you f-ing idiot. If you get the fuck okay. straight. I mean, Jen's ability to say those words for her to not even bat a lash and just be like, I'm going to correct you. <laughs> it was the pharmaceutical rep, not the office manager. I just, you know, it says a lot about Jen. It does. Now, Marge says that Jen is a hypocrite for villainizing her 
and her mother for having affairs. Now, that's complicated. Jen saying those things about Margaret doesn't make her a hypocrite. It does make her an asshole, but I don't believe that it makes her a hypocrite. But it does make Jennifer a hypocrite that she praises her husband so much as a, I don't know, like a personality trait. You know, one that's always been one of Jennifer's things is like, you know, I'm honest and I'm open and my life is perfect and my husband is the best. So I do think that it makes her hypocritical that she would look down on people who have affairs while also at the same time constantly talking about how amazing and perfect Bill is. That is hypocritical because people who have affairs is also your husband. That being said, Jennifer saying, my husband is the best and I have a great life is not a lie, okay? That's not a lie. It might be her truth at the moment that she's saying it, you know? And I don't think that that's even a good enough reason for Margaret to bring up the affair because that's something that happened 10 years ago. Margaret keeps saying, oh, you're not being honest. You're not being honest. Well, she is being honest. In Jennifer's life at that moment at the pool party, she does believe that our husband is the best and she does believe that she has a great life. That is not a lie. That is Jennifer's truth. The issue is obviously that Margaret just doesn't like her, (laughs) you know? It can be very well true that Jennifer does think that her husband is great and does think that her life is great. So all this happens between Margaret and Jennifer. Jennifer is in her feelings. Margaret walks away. She tells the other women what she did. And she tells us in a confessional, Jennifer pushed me too far tonight. I'm like, what did Jennifer say that like, pushed you too far. Like just own your shit. Own the fact that you were sitting on this information. You knew that this was the first party of the show and that you just wanted to make a splash. Like just own that you were producing and giving us, you know, excellent television content by attacking this person that you have from the beginning of the show you have not liked. Jennifer was just saying Bill is the best and I have a good life. And I don't know if that is a good enough reason for Margaret to say, well, she pushed me too far. She didn't push you too far. You just wanted to stir shit up, which more power to you. Again, excellent television. Don't ever change. And Margaret tells the other women about it and everybody's like, I don't know, that's like not great. But I want everybody to notice one thing as you're watching this episode, if you go back and watch it, or I don't know if it's going to continue on. But Melissa Gorga has, is, Melissa Gorga is the dumbest person in the world. (laughs) The whole time things are happening and Melissa just keeps being like, what? What happened? Huh? I don't get it, you guys. What's going on? What's the drama? And she's doing it so much that I'm like, bitch, you knew that she was going to do this. Like, you are overcorrecting so hard about how confused you are, quote unquote, that I believe that you knew all about this this whole time. Now, Margaret's not really getting the reaction from the other women that she was expecting because I think ultimately, like, nobody really likes a pylon. And even Jackie feels bad for Jen. Jackie and Jennifer, who have never, ever gotten along. Jennifer tells Bill, and she just wants to go home. So that thing gets tabled. Now, the big other thing that happens at this party is, of course, Tio Joe. Tio? Tia? Tio? (laughs) Zio. Tia and Tamara Mari Joe Gorga. No, uh, Zio. Zio Joe. Zio Joe and Gia Judice have words. Now, Gia comes into the space. Everybody's kind of gathering themselves, figuring out what happened. Oh, Bill left, blah, blah, blah. The men are sitting together. Teresa and Gia tell them that Bill left because, as Gia says, people say things that they shouldn't be saying. Joe Gorga says, well, it's fine. I didn't want to be around her anyway, her as in Jennifer, because she called me a crook. And that's wrong to say stuff like that on social media. And, you know, amazing thing about the Gorgas, it's Teresa's like this, and Joey's like this. It's like they're not self-aware humans. Okay, Joe Gorga doesn't understand that he does the exact same thing that Jennifer is doing. And he continues to chastise Gia for rolling her eyes at her uncle and slash godfather and being disrespectful, even though we have years, years of footage of Joe Gorga being disrespectful to people who are older than him. Okay. But Joe tells Gia to have some respect because Gia is having a conversation with her mother about the fact that Joe is talking about not saying things on social media. And she's looking at her mom like, yeah, like you shouldn't be saying stuff about dad. And of course, Joe loses it because he's a giant baby. 
He tells Gia to have some respect. Gia says, hey, I'm an adult. I'm going to sit with the adults. I'm going to say my piece. So saying you're my uncle at this point doesn't mean anything, which I loved because as the youngest person in my family, cannot tell you the number of times I've been in situations where somebody's like, have some respect for your brother. He's older than you. Just because he was born before me doesn't mean anything. Just because Joe Gorga was born before Gia or has a relationship with Gia of an elder doesn't mean that he actually knows what the hell he's talking about. Just because you're older than someone doesn't mean that you don't get to be corrected. Just because you're older than someone doesn't mean that you can't learn something from someone younger than you. My kids correct me all the time. Do I love it? No. But are they right sometimes? Usually not because they're eight and five, but occasionally when they are. I have to listen to them. That's how you grow. But again, this is a Gorgas. I don't know if he necessarily has the capacity to understand that kind of growth. But my favorite thing about this is Joe walks away in a very dramatic Joe Gorga fashion. And he says, who raised you? I loved you since the minute I saw you. (laughs) Just was like, again, it was hilarious. What does that have to do with anything, Joe? Gia says, I haven't seen you in six months. Walk away. You have to have a scene, which is true. This is, you know, Joe Gorga loves the scene. Gia has a great point because Gia is essentially saying, you can't sit here and say, uh, social media slamming is so bad while also slamming somebody's father on social media to the world, to the show, whatever. I think the underlying thing that's not being said here is like Gia is basically saying like, hey, don't make my dad your storyline again. Because that's not cool. Let's not also forget that Joe Gorga's entrance into the housewife's world was a fight with Joe Judice at his son's christening. By the way, if you'd like to hear more about that, go over to our Patreon where I recap that very episode with my brother. Anyway, he screamed and cried at his father. Talk about disrespectful. He screamed. He like wailed at his father at a religious event because he hated Joe Judice. So like, Gia is very aware of the fact that Joe Judice has been Joe Gorga's storyline for as long as they've been on the show. You know, while Joe Judice is an absolute piece of shit, Joe Gorga can't sit here and complain about nastiness on social media while also being nasty on social media. But the twist is that the fight turns into a different conversation altogether. We forget the stuff about social media. It somehow turns into Joe Gorga saying, your dad sent my parents to an early grave. And like, that's where Gia loses it, where she's like, you can't keep saying that. Stop talking, stop bringing up my grandparents and stop bringing up my dad and stop trying to like justify the reason for why you keep slamming my father. Like Gia's point is stop slamming my father on social media if you do not want to also be slammed on social media. And rather than saying, you're right, I shouldn't say anything, Joe is doubling down on why he keeps slamming Joe Judice. And I think Gia actually does a wonderful job of like, speaking sense into this absolute meathead for herself, but also on behalf of her sisters. Like Teresa doesn't have the ability to say these things because I don't think Teresa is, uh, we know she's not so great with words, you know, like that's, uh, that's been her shtick the whole time. Like even last year when they had that fight where the cheese cubes went flying, (laughs) that was the whole fight. The fight was that Teresa was saying like, you can't keep talking about my ex-husband because it's not fair. And I don't think it went well because they, both of them don't know how to communicate. But I think Gia kind of nails it at this point to be like, all that is said and done. I think she also says something about like, do you think my dad doesn't think about this? He can't even come into the country. He's paid his debt for it or is paying it. I don't know. But Gia is telling her uncle and her aunt, hey, don't make my dad a storyline this year. To which I say, good for you, Gia. The party's over. Then we go to this pool party that Jennifer's having for her kids. Teresa and Dolores come. Apparently this was shot in the height of heat in New Jersey. They keep saying how hot they are. And I was like, did I ever get that hot this summer? And you know what I realized, guys? I didn't leave my house. That's that's what happened. Anyway, Dolores and Teresa come over and they commend Jen for holding her own at the party. They both agree, Dolores and Teresa, that Marge shouldn't have done this. And I think Jennifer does, again, a great job of being very honest about the whole thing. It's a very sad story. She was pregnant. She went into labor the very next day. It was just not a good situation. They dealt with it 10 years ago. They never talked about it again, and they moved on. And, you know, from a cultural standpoint, that is something that I think I understand. I think it's also something Teresa understands. Hello. We still don't ever have Teresa on camera admitting admitting that her husband ever slept with other people. 
or maybe we do and I just haven't kept that in my mental archive of Teresa things. But my point is that's something that happens here, right? In these kind of old school relationships. And I don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand that culturally speaking, that aligns with something that Jennifer likely grew up around. Things like this happen. You keep it under wraps. You you respect your husband in public. You don't air out your dirty laundry and you move on. And it's not anybody's business. And to be honest, I don't think that it is anybody's business that Bill had an affair 10 years ago. And again, I do think Jennifer is doing a great job of holding her own. She could have denied it. She could have said this is bullshit. But even at the party, (laughs) she said it was a pharmaceutical rep. Uh, We see a scene with Jackie at home with her family. It's very cute. I love the sleepaway camp talk. I know Jackie's pretty boring. I was half paying attention. But I do want to just bring it up because sleepaway camps with especially like my friends who were Jewish growing up, that was like a big thing. So I feel like like culturally speaking, you know, we see a lot of Italian cultures as like a little bit of American Jewish culture. So good for you, Jackie, for showing that. Also, her mom is great. She's drunk. <laughs> her mom gets there. Jackie says, would you like half of this bottle of red wine? And her mom says, yeah, it's been like a minute since I had my last drink. <laughs> She's great. Anyway, Dolores and Marge go shopping and Jackie visits Jen. This is a classic thing they do where they have like two scenes being shot or made to look like, you know, they're happening at the same time. I don't know why they do it, but I love it. Okay. I don't know. I don't even know if they happen back to back. But regardless, Jackie visits Jennifer and Jennifer, you know, for the person she's been (laughs) the last however many years she's been on TV, she's been a real, real piece of shit. Okay, Jennifer, let me just clarify. It sounds like I'm very sympathetic to Jennifer this episode, but Jennifer is an asshole, which everybody on the show is an asshole. I don't know if Jackie's an asshole. Um, Jackie was kind of an asshole last season. Everybody's an asshole, okay? Jennifer has been a genuine asshole, and she's very much been, you know, on her high horse looking down at people, and that is for sure true. She looks down on people. She's very judgy. She's very new money, and I know that person very well because it's culturally speaking, I've, I've seen that person before. But Jackie has really come down off her high horse. I'm sorry, Jennifer has really come down uh, off her high horse. Did I say Jackie or Jennifer this whole time? I don't know. Anyway, I don't have anybody here to correct me. And she's bonding with Jackie. And Jackie is being pretty supportive given she went through a kind of similar situation with Evan. But she does make a point multiple times this episode to be like, I know I look like I'm sympathizing. I just want you guys to know that I I just, this isn't to say that anything with Evan was true. I just want to remind everyone that it was a horrible rumor and it wasn't true. She repeats that many, many times. And she repeats it so many times that I'm like, I don't know, Jackie. Now I feel like Evan did get his dick sucked at the gym. Jackie essentially says to Jennifer, you guys are both horrible to each other. And she does say that she doesn't think it's necessarily wrong what Margaret did because you've poked the bear enough times that Margaret would be nasty back to you. And I think that's fine. But Jackie does also say that she feels bad about the fact that Jennifer's kids are finding out this way. Jackie's kids went through a similar thing, but they were able to say nothing actually happened. Whereas with Jennifer, she is going to have to explain. I think she's gone on social media to talk about it, that her daughter found out through TikTok. And this is something that she has to now sit down and talk to her kids about. And that's very sad. That is very sad. At the same time, quote unquote, Margaret and Dolores are discussing this whole thing that went down. They're at some sort of a furniture store. Which, again, I'm like, stop it. Stop lying to me. You're not shopping for furniture. Okay. Anyway, they're having this conversation and they're discussing what happened with Jennifer. Margaret tells Dolores that at the time when all this stuff with Jackie and Evan and the rumor was happening last season, that Jennifer was super nosy and she was digging around And she called Frank and she asked him to share pictures of the girls because apparently Frank had a picture of the girl that sucked Evan's dick at the gym. I don't know if that's actually what they did, but I'm going to go with it. Marge says that Jennifer tried to shake down multiple people to get information on Jackie to try to take Jackie down. And here's the thing. I always like to judge people based on what I see on camera. I did not see this happen on camera. I did not see this brought up on camera. Why wasn't this brought up last season? Why are we talking about it now? But suddenly Dolores changes her tune. A scene ago, two scenes ago, she was patting Jennifer on the back, wiping her tears. And now Dolores is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, now that you brought Frank into it, it all makes sense why you would bring this up. But I ask, does it still make sense why Margaret would bring this up? Like, yes, Margaret, Jackie is your quote unquote dear friend. 
but is fighting someone else's battle who doesn't even know. Like Jackie doesn't even know that you're fighting her battle. Is that fair? And also Margaret says that she never told Jackie that Jennifer was digging around about her. Why? Why didn't she bring it up? I'll tell you why she didn't bring it up. She didn't bring it up because she knew that other people knew the rumor that Teresa brought up about Evan. I know, let's take a minute. I just said a thing that confused me as well. Okay, let's just let's, let's think through that, that line of thought that I just said out loud. I don't even know if it makes sense. Okay. Margaret purposely did not bring this thing up that she knew very well last season. She knew last season that Jennifer was digging around, quote unquote, about Jackie and Evan. And she was trying to get evidence to take Jackie and Evan down. Margaret knew this. She didn't bring it up at the reunion and she didn't bring it up all last season. Why? Is it because Margaret also knows that multiple other people in Tenafly or the area know the same rumor to be true about Evan? Is that why she didn't bring it up? But regardless of that, why didn't Margaret tell Jackie that Jennifer was doing this because Margaret also already told Jackie that Bill had an affair. So why would she tell Jackie about Bill's affair for some reason, but not also tell Jackie that Jennifer, by the way, has been trying to take you down all last season by calling people for evidence? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And what it makes me wonder is, are Margaret and Jackie even close friends? Or is Margaret just using this as an excuse for why she decided to spill this rumor about Bill? You know, Margaret is trying to come up with other reasons for it, but Margaret, you know, own your truth. You did this because you don't like Jennifer, period. That's it. That's the reason why. There's nothing else. We go and see Dolores' new townhouse. There's a lot of food. I, I gotta ask, do they bring this food in to feed the crew? Because it's a lot of food and I don't think all these women are gonna eat it. So I'm assuming that it's a lot of it's for the people behind the camera. A new friend of shows up. I don't know who she is and I didn't even get her name. But Kiki Barber is there, whose name is actually Tracy. But you know what? We're going to keep it with Kiki Barber, wife of Tiki Barber. Apparently Dolores and David are really not even together. And much like her new homes, I don't care. Okay, every season there's a new thing about a home and a boyfriend. And both of them I genuinely don't care. They all briefly talk about Louie's video. Uh, I think at this point, Melissa's there, Margaret's there, Jackie's there. Those two other randoms are there. They talk about Louie's video and Margaret seems to know a lot about it. Some sort of toxic dude retreat, which like, yeah, it gives me like toxic dude, major white supremacist. <laughs> like vibes the whole thing it's a mess anyway jennifer eventually does come jackie greets her right away which is so sweet and jennifer is immediately not handling it well because she clearly doesn't want to be in this room again melissa at this moment is like why is jennifer crying i don't understand why jennifer's crying why is she crying what's going on what are you guys talking about and i'm like stop it you're overcorrecting you know you know exactly what's going on you knew that this was going to be a storyline everybody keeps reacting this way everybody's like i don't know why jennifer's crying i think at one point, Melissa says something like, oh, where's the tough girl now? Well, bitch, like, you guys just resurfaced a rumor about her from 10 years ago. And by the way, are we acting like we didn't all just watch Jackie, like, literally cry herself, her eyes out, and act crazy all last season? And you guys are being so nice and so sympathetic. And now when Jennifer is doing that, you're not? Like, People are allowed to feel hurt even when they're assholes. I get it. Jennifer's an asshole. She says and does horrible things to people, but she's still allowed to feel hurt. Just because you're an asshole doesn't mean that you can't get your feelings hurt. But anyway, Dolores is angry at Jennifer for crying. Melissa says, oh, where's the tough girl, but also pretends like she doesn't know why she's crying. These people are just like not interested in giving her any grace, which you and Jennifer didn't make a lot of friends. And this is what happens. But then Margaret comes over and is like, what are you crying about? Which... <laughs> was so aggressive, so rude. But you know, Jennifer really gathers herself up and says, look, I know I said things about you and your mother and your family, but I've had an opinion on things that you've chosen to discuss. You're bringing up things about somebody else who hasn't done anything to you, which is true. Bill has not done anything to Margaret. Jennifer has done things to Margaret, but Bill has not done anything to Margaret. Now, this is when Margaret pivots to, well, it's because of what you did to Jackie trying to dig up all the dirt. And Jennifer, again, owns it. I believe Jennifer. 
do I believe that Jennifer is nosy as hell? And like, if she heard a rumor, wouldn't pick up other people and be like, bitch, did you hear about this? Of course she would. Because you know what? So would I. So would every single other person on this cast. Everybody who's acting like they didn't know is a liar. Everybody who's acting like they didn't dig around and ask questions and have conversations about what happened, about this rumor about Evan, is a liar. Everybody does that. That is what happens when you hear a rumor about your friend or their husband or whoever. You'll sit around and gossip. Everybody taking a high road and trying to pin it down on Jennifer to say, like, I can't believe you would be digging up dirt. It's not digging up dirt. It's being nosy and curious, and I believe Jennifer when she says it. But Jackie gets upset because now suddenly it's the first time Jackie's heard about it. And it's weird. It's like everybody keeps saying there's no reason to cry. It's kind of insane. It becomes this pylon. Margaret, for some reason, doesn't seem to understand why this is hurtful to Jennifer's children because she's like, fine, I said and did whatever, but now... My kids are going to have to figure this out. I'm going to have to have a conversation with my kids. And Margaret says, I can't believe she said these words. She says, the affair that Bill had is what is wrong and what is hurting her kids. Not the fact that Margaret brought it into the public, which is like an insane thing for Margaret to say as a person who doesn't even have her children on camera. We didn't even know that she had kids because she doesn't talk about it because we've never seen them. So it's it's insane that you can be somebody who understands that children's privacy needs to be respected and all that shit, but at the same time say, well, it's not my fault that it was brought into public and it's going to hurt them. Mm, no, it is. It's You did this. And then also there was a clip. Um, I think Jennifer actually posted it on her Instagram stories from like, couple of seasons ago this is back when like siggy was on camera so i think this is before jackie before jennifer even joined the show maybe jennifer was i don't remember but anyway this is when kim d was saying stuff about joe and Teresa cheating on each other and margaret said at the reunion that you know it's messed up because it's the children that get hurt when you say stuff like this on camera and the response to that from a lot of people has been well what kim d was doing was spreading rumors come on come on now we know we know Joe Judas and Teresa Judas were not faithful to each other. Hello. Hasn't she already mentioned? I don't know if she's mentioned that. But listen, my point was, again, this is just shit old school people don't talk about, but I digress. Margaret is somebody who is doing a thing that is so frustrating on Housewives, which is like, just own that you did a thing to hurt a person because you just don't like her. But then don't police how that person is reacting. What did you want Jennifer to do? Not cry, to cuss at you, flip out on you, flip a table? Like, what were you expecting Jennifer to do in this situation? She's crying about it because she's upset. And now you guys are annoyed with the fact that she's crying about it. It doesn't make any sense, but it does make excellent television. Jennifer chooses to remove herself from the situation. She leaves. Uh, I think Teresa comes right before that. I can't remember. But they're all talking about it after Jennifer leaves. And it ends with Melissa Gorga, just always the unself-aware queen. Is it unself-aware or is it self-unaware? Regardless, she says... The girls who have it the worst always put up a facade that everything is perfect. Ooh, oh, again, the Gorgas, no self-awareness at all, but great episode. I love the fact that the whole discussion turns into teams. I hate the fact that it turns into teams, actually, but it's a great way to remind people that like people are capable of multiple things. You can be an asshole to somebody and somebody else can be justified for being an asshole back to you because you were an asshole to them. But then we can't police how people react, right? Like if Jennifer is poking a bear, she cannot then be upset that the bear decided to attack her, right? And at the same time, then the bear, aka Margaret, can't get mad and act shocked when Jennifer decides to cry about it. Like people are capable of being assholes and also having hurt feelings. And sometimes you can be right and sometimes you can be wrong. Jennifer is probably misogynist. Like she's got a lot of internalized misogyny. A lot of the things she says is really fucked up. But also Margaret's an asshole too. She called Jennifer's sister-in-law a mail order bride. She's looked down on Jennifer's culture this whole time. So I I think they're both wrong. I think they're both toxic. But guys, guess what? 10 out of 10 television. I love it. Never change. Okay, let's move on to uh, the Orange County. We open back up in Cabo and it's Noella versus Heather. And Noella is apologizing to Heather while also dismissing her. (laughs) It's like a level of annoying that I don't know how to even quantify or calculate or I don't know what word I'm looking for, but it's annoying and it's great. 
Noella turns suddenly on Gina, which is weird, and then also on Emily. And then Heather leaves because Noella is annoying. And then everyone leaves because Noella is annoying. (laughs) But the person who does decide to come back is Tequila Shannon. Tequila Shannon gets behind the bar and ropes Tequila Emily in. Emily falls on her ass. And one thing the OC ladies are always going to do is just get drunk and show their butts. Show their butts, show their spanks. Also very true for Real Housewives of New York. Rest in peace. I don't think that show's coming back. Then everybody leaves. They go back home. Um, Jen has a scene with her daughter. And kids just say the darndest things, don't they? I'm just kidding. I don't care. 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 I don't care that your kid is hilarious. I will say that girl is so funny. But I don't care about this. Okay? Work-life balance. Uh, I'm such a bitch. I'm like, at the same time, if one of my real-life friends (laughs) was talking to me about this, I would be like so nice and so understanding. But on TV, I'm like, get out of my face. (laughs) I'm an asshole. Heather and Gina have lunch. Heather invites Gina to New York and they talk about Cabo. And Gina says, you know, she's accepted that she cannot be the kind of friend to Noella that perhaps Noella expects or needs. And I agree. Isn't that the same reason why Nicole James, who we never saw again after that bikini shop, isn't that the same reason why she stopped being friends with Noella, where she was like, I just, I don't think that our relationship is appropriate. I don't know what she said. I don't know. I can barely, I barely remember any word she says. All I see is her overlined lips and her bizarre eyebrows. You know, she kind of looks like Brittany, Brittany Couchy. She kind of looks like her in a way because the eyebrows are nuts. Anyway, I agree with Gina. I don't think you always have to be friends with this kind of person. Okay, you don't have to, once you start to get to know someone and they're coming in too hot, initially you're like, oh, this is great. We're bonding so much and blah, blah, blah. And then they share too much. And then you're like, oh no, I don't think this is good for me. I've been in that situation before and I've decided to take a step back. And sometimes it's hard because it's like, does that make me a bad person? It doesn't. It means that you're a person with boundaries and you should respect those boundaries and other people should respect them too. Shani Hanas. Okay. <laughs> Shannon Bedore is in her element when she is on the water. Goodness, what a woman. She invites everybody, not everybody, I guess it's Emily and Heather and their signifs to John's boat house and boat. Then they also do a hibachi at the dock and Shannon calls it Shani Hana. And I think it was Kendrick from Reality and Comics 2 podcast and his Instagram, which you should all be following his Instagram. Anyway, he posted this meme of being like, you know that Shani Hannah's has no seasoning on their food. And I agree. I do think that that is true. But back on the boat, I mean, Shannon is great. I wrote down in my notes that I do not ever want to be out at sea. Shannon said that she wouldn't mind retiring on a boat. Um, I wouldn't because I've watched Dexter and I know how easy it is to dispose bodies at sea. I wonder if Shannon knows that. Like, You know that Shannon is the kind of person that, like, if somebody convinced her enough that that happened, she would just start wigging out. Like, the cognitive dissonance in Shannon's mind of, like, loving being on the water, loving being on a boat versus knowing that murder can happen out here, she would get into a tizzy. I don't want to ruin it for her. You know, I don't want to ruin it for her. Shannon, Shannon has very few things in the world where she feels genuinely good. And it seemed like on a boat, Shannon seemed genuinely good. She felt like she was in her element. And I'm going to let her have it crazy lady. Also boats, like I feel like it's a very American thing. I feel like boats are like camping. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Not interested. But Shannon, good for you. They get to the dock and they have this hibachi. The man is called Noodles. Uh, I have a story about that. So my name is Noor, (laughs) as everybody knows listening to this. But my real name is Noor Olan, which means light of the eyes in Arabic. I've never been called by my full name ever, ever in my whole life. Not by my parents, not anybody. I think the only time I get called by my full name is when I'm at like a doctor's appointment or, you know, the passport office. But nobody ever calls me by my full name. But when I was younger, <laughs> when people found out what my name was and I would say New Orleans, they would say Noodle Man? <laughs> Let me tell you, middle school kids are horrible. <laughs> they called me Noodle Man. So this hibachi man calling himself Noodles. 
I don't know. It just triggered a memory that I didn't love. Shannon's boyfriend, John, a.k.a. Orange County Al Gore, tells us this very sad story about his dad who rejected him. And I see that in OC, they're trying to bring the husbands back. Like a couple episodes ago, they had like a husbands go out to dinner scene. And it was it was fine. Um, but I do. It's a, it's a nice story. Thanks for sharing, OC Al Gore. They also talk about how toxic dads, you know, drive them to be better. And I think I see that. But I think it's healthy until it's not. I think it's one of those things where you can be driven by somebody really toxic who is difficult on you as a child. But as an adult, you need to realize that whatever you do as an adult is never going to fulfill that person's idea of you. And at some point, you need to come to peace with being like, even if I do my very best today and that person was alive to see it, they would never care and they would never validate it. And I'm enough and I can validate myself. I wonder if that's true for Emily. And I hope that she doesn't like put that pressure on Shane. I mean, again, Shane should be nicer to his wife, but you guys know I I have a strange and soft spot for Shane. Okay, I do. We head over to the Q dubs, (laughs) the quiet woman (laughs) with Shannon and Emily and Noella. And Noella tells us that she's upset that Gina has stopped talking to her because they went so deep so fast. And I wanted to be like, baby, that's the reason. That's the reason why she stopped talking to you because you went too deep too fast. You know, pace yourself. Uh, They talk about a stack of vaginas. Um, The best line of this episode is when Shannon says, how many vaginas make a stack? (laughs) I love Shannon Bedore. I cannot get enough of her. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, can you breathe? <laughs> Did he walk up a ladder? <laughs> How many vaginas does it take to make a stack? But apparently this is information that Jen told Emily and Emily brings it up to Noella and Noella gets mad about it. But at the same time, she continues to talk about the stack of vaginas. Like, I feel like Noella is mad that she didn't get to share this information about her sex life with her estranged husband first. And she's just mad that Jen, like, took that away from her. I don't think Noella actually really cares that, like, somebody was talking about her. Because that's the point. When you share this kind of information with people, when you tell somebody upon meeting them within five minutes that you gave your husband a stack of vaginas for uh, an anniversary, which I don't understand. Does Sweet James have three penises? What is he doing? What's happening in the stack? Are they going one at a time? Are they taking turns? Do people draw a hat? How do you decide the position? There are so many open questions about the stack of vaginas. But regardless, when you share that information with a person, you are sharing it because you want people to talk about you. You don't share that information for somebody to go, okay, and then never discuss it again. Of course you're going to talk about it again. Of course Jen is going to tell Emily because it's weird and it's weird enough to repeat. Anyway, they have this dinner. It's whatever. Heather comes over to Jen's house and makes her own drinks. And, you know, on the topic of Dr. Jen, I just have to say, why do people with shitty marriages decide to come on TV? If your husband is hesitant even a little bit about being on camera, maybe don't sign up. Like, Maybe say my husband is never going to be on the show. Like how I get it. Like Jen is trying to grow her brand. It sounds like she has like another practice that she's opening up and she's trying to make money and she even talks to Heather about it. But, you know, you're not going to get so much more exposure on the show that you're going to be able to quit your other jobs. Like I don't understand the drive for people to go on TV when they have trouble within their marriage. Because later on, Jen does try to have this moment with Ryan, 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 and it's super awkward. I do think that Ryan should be nicer to her and like give Jen what she's looking for, which is like comfort. But Jen says something which is very troubling, not troubling. It's insightful into where her mind is at. She says something like, you know, I wish that you would do what my dad would do or something like that. She says something like that. But it's very obvious that she's trying to fulfill the dad hole by putting a husband there. And that's never going to work. Like you're always going to have a private experience because your husband is never going to fulfill your father's role because your husband is not your father. It's your husband. And that's that's never going to work out in your favor. Emily has a game night. Game nights are big on OC. They love a game night in OC. Um, remember they tried to do that in Real Houses of New York? 
how many years ago was it feels like a ages ago that weird game night valentine galentine's day rest in peace anyway emily has a game night they play games it's whatever Noella says the thing that annoyed me. She came in wearing leopard. She says to Gina, it's a Jersey vibe. And I'm glad Gina said, I'm not from New Jersey. Because you know what? I agree. He's not from New Jersey. It's a, it's a, it's a, Long Island is not New Jersey. Long Island is part of New York. It's so far. I've driven from Jersey to Long Island. It takes a very long time. It takes like two hours. So no, it's not the same. But uh, they talk again about the stack of vaginas. And Noella says another weird thing. She says, oh, I guess I have to tell you something because of this like weird accusation that Jen made about me. It's not an accusation. <laughs> you told Jen about your stack of vaginas. And Jen said that's weird and talked about it with her other friends. That's not an accusation, Noella. It's not an accusation if it's true. It's just a thing about you. <laughs> but then they have the stack and I am again, not interested and very confused. Then Gina and Noella sit and talk. And I think Noella is a perfect example of private experiences. Like Noella is a walking private experience. She's got too much. She's too paranoid and too insecure about her place in the world, whether it's with her friends or her husband or whoever, or on the show to be a normal human being to be friends with. If somebody's insecure and they think that the whole world is out to get them, which look, Noella might have plenty reason for that, right? Again, she's a liberal, biracial, bisexual woman living in a conservative area. But at the same time, if you're not secure in yourself, you're always going to have a hard time making friends because you're always going to think that somebody else is out to get you. You're always going to have these private experiences and no one's ever going to really want to be your true friend because they're going to be too scared to be your friend. So good for Gina. But Noella, you know what? As annoying as she is, Keep her on the show. I love nothing more than watching a private experience on TV. I feel like the best housewives are ones that have many, many private experiences. I think I said private experiences today 140 times on this solo podcast. All right, let's move over to Miami. Uh, everyone is back from the Hamptons. Alexia and Larsa meet up and they talk about Lisa and they talk about Nicole. Alexia says that Lisa is tired and apparently the reason why Lisa is tired is because she doesn't have a nanny. And Alexia says, Lisa can't complain. Look at the rest of the world. Um, Alexia, you keep bringing up the fact that you have to plan a wedding as a reason for why you're nasty to people. So like, I don't think that you have a leg to stand on there. However, I love your inability to see that and you should continue to be exactly who you are. They also talk about Larissa's divorce and Alexia says, cut the umbilical cord about Scotty. And I was like, that's not right. <laughs> Larsa's not connected to Scotty with an umbilical cord. <laughs> anyway, they're both idiots. They're both idiots and watching them have a conversation is so funny. Because like they're both just thinking completely different things. Like Larsa's saying like ABC and Alexia's hearing one, two, three. And they're both just nodding and smiling at each other. And like, you know, nobody's actually paying attention. Again, another great thing I love about Miami is that nobody's actually interested in being actual friends with anybody everybody is just constantly calculating and manipulating and trying to take the other person down but they do it in a much more laid back way than they do in salt lake city and i really enjoy it lisa goes to visit her husband lenny they talk about the nanny situation they also have a dinner with lenny's parents lenny's mom looks great it looks like lenny's really been taking care of his mother because his poor dad i mean they're very old but the dad, you know, he's aged in 10 years. He's probably like in his 80s or 90s. And he's so sweet. He's like just grumbles. And Lenny's mom is just like chatty McCathy, just doing her thing, looking amazing, getting the glam. It's great. We have a scene at Nicole's house where Gertie, Julia, and Kiki visit. And they talk about what happened with Nicole in the Hamptons with the women. And they say the big really bizarre thing that was said was this thing about children out of wedlock that Larsa was so out of line for saying something like that and I agree it was a bizarre statement this is a very Larsa heavy episode there's another scene with Larsa she goes to dinner with Kiki and Adriana and uh, it's so weird there's a lot of dick talk and then there's vagina talk and then there's Kanye talk Adriana tells a story about how she walked in on Kanye West peeing and saw his dick. I have a theory that <laughs> I have a theory that Adriana has been wanting to bring up the Kardashians this whole time. Like Adriana's biggest bone with Larsa is that Larsa was 
on the show, left the show, was somehow invited back to the show, but she shouldn't have been because Larsa is only coming back because the Kardashians don't want to be friends with her anymore. I think those are all true. I do think that Larsa left the show to be on a show with the Kardashians or become friendly with the Kardashians. I do think that she only came back to the show because she's no longer friends with the Kardashians. I think all those things are true. But I don't believe that Adriana, I don't believe the story about Kanye West's dick. Okay. I don't want to think about it, first of all. That's not a thing I want to think about. Kanye West is already oversharing today as we speak. Like, I think he's currently in a fight with Billie Eilish. (laughs) Billie Eilish. Who fights with Billie Eilish? Who? But Kanye is in a fight with her and he's fighting with Kim and he's talking about, he's prancing around town and in his Canadian tuxedos with that Julia Fox lady who either she's wearing a Canadian tuxedo, which is a full denim outfit, very JT and Britney, or they're wearing that weird leather suit. Like, I don't want to spend this much. Look at me. I'm talking about Kanye West. I don't care about him. I don't care about him. He's already oversharing. And now Adriana is oversharing about his dick. Again, I don't want to think about his dick. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. But I think that she only brings this up as a weird way to continue talking about the Kardashians. That's all Adriana wants. All she wants to know is, Larsa, why did you come back to the show? What happened with you and Kim? Why aren't you ta- telling us why, what happened there? Why don't you go back to your old friends? Adriana also says that she thinks that Larsa looks down on her. I do think that Larsa looks down on her, but I also think Adriana is insecure and she would think anybody would look down on her. But in this fight at this dinner, I'm weirdly on Larsa's side. I get Larsa's point. She's like, hey, can you not talk about his penis? He is somebody's father and he is still the husband of my friend. And I don't, and he was my former friend or is my friend. I don't want to talk about it and it's inappropriate. But I do think in that moment, all Larsa needed to do, I think she did enough. She did enough. And then Adriana was just being weird and losing her mind and, you know, bringing up other things, other misconceptions or other issues that she has with Larsa. And the event does not go well or the dinner does not end well. Larsa leaves. Gertie has a beautiful event for Haiti, and she has this really sweet moment with her husband and her dad. Now, I will say her husband, whenever he's been on camera, I'm like, this man does not want to be on TV. And I didn't understand their relationship. I didn't understand their marriage. I didn't feel the chemistry there. I believe Gertie, but I feel like she was playing up a lot for cameras. And I was just like, you know, cool it down. You can both just be a boring couple. That's okay. You don't have to be like, oh, we're so sexy and we love each other. Like, you don't have to do all that, Gertie. I believe that you absolutely love each other. He really adores you, but it's very obvious he doesn't want to be on camera. But there's this really sweet moment where Gertie's father comes. He's telling Gertie how proud he is and it's a beautiful event. And Russell says, you know, everything she has is because of you. Like, it's a it's a genuine moment that I was like, that is something a husband would say to his father-in-law if he really adores his wife. Like, I feel like if my husband, by the way, he's never done it. If my husband ever complimented me in front of my parents, I would probably give that man another baby. He's never done it, but it is a very sweet moment. And it's definitely like, it felt natural to me. The entire decoration and everything looks really cool. And I want to point out that if you look at the decor and you look at the photo booth and the way everything is set up and look at the cast photos for Miami, I feel like they took Gertie's event and turned it into the reason why they should like in turn it into the theme of Miami. Like it turned in, into the cover shot, um, all the photos, everything. It looked like they even took that picture for the show, the cast photo at that event. And I just I was like, good for you, Gertie. She has the aesthetic down. The fashion show looks amazing. The clothes look amazing. I certainly couldn't wear any of them as I'm too short and too fat, but the clothes look awesome. Marisol comes and it's awkward between her and Nicole. And Marisol says something like, it's so liberating when you're older to not let things bother you. And I was like, well, that's bullshit. Okay, that's bullshit. You literally went after Nicole in the Hamptons because she did something that was bothering you. So don't sit here and say, oh, when you're older, you don't let things bother you. No, you do let things bother you. But what doesn't bother you is that you make someone feel bad. It bothers you when someone else makes you feel bad, but it doesn't bother you when then you retaliate and you hurt somebody back. That's the difference. That's what is quote unquote liberating to you. It's liberating to you to know that you can be cruel to someone and not give a shit about their feelings. That's not liberating. That's just cruel. Then Larsa comes late and her and Adriana have words. It's a mess. It's a mess. It really is bad. It's not the time. It's not the place. 
Adriana goes ballistic. Larsa's just trying to defend herself. I feel weird even being like Larsa is right in this situation because Larsa is so dumb and so annoying. But I do think that she's right. I don't think that Adriana has a real storyline. I don't think she has an actual leg to stand on. I think that she just wants to dig in on Larsa about her friendship with the Kardashians and why she left the show and why she's back. That's Adriana's biggest bone and she's going to try to bring it up. But Adriana cannot keep it cool. She's not cool. She's not interesting. Her fashion is horrible right now. Her face is constantly looking greasy. She's wearing colored contacts, which I just hate. I know I'm a team twirl and Kenya Moore loves her colored contacts, but I don't know. Adriana just looks a mess. She looks a mess. It's just bizarre. And the fight she has with Larsa is insane. Larsa does go up to Gertie and say sorry and blah, blah, blah. And this event is beautiful. But Gertie also says like, you showed up late and then you got into a fight. I don't think that Larsa meant to get into the fight. I mean, Adriana obviously went up to her and started provoking her again. But Adriana doesn't know how to keep it cool. This was evident in early seasons of Miami as well. And anybody who goes too extreme, I'm just like not interested. And again, this whole fight being around Kanye West's penis is just something that I could do without. There's other things you guys could fight about. And you don't have to bring it up because of Kanye's dick. Okay? You could just bring it up and say, you only came back on the show because your friends are no longer friends with you. That's it. That's all you had to say, Adriana. You don't have to make it a whole bunch of other stuff. Anyway, I can't believe I've spent almost an hour talking to you guys or myself, essentially, this whole time. Give me some grace. (laughs) I feel very silly. I feel silly. And I will say I really miss the sound of Arthi with her jokes and her laughter. I sound like this is a memorial about her. She's coming back. I text her all the time. You're probably listening right now, Arthi. But um, I just miss her. I miss her here. Um, hopefully in other episodes, I'm going to try to get guests on so you don't have to listen to me ramble on and on, but I hope this wasn't too torturous. It wasn't too cringy, but yeah, that's it. That's it for this episode. And I, and who knows whom will talk to you next week. Also, I believe on Monday, the dumpster dive kiddos, Tommy and Kixie. I don't think I've ever called Tom, Tommy before, but anyway, Tom and Kix do a summer house pregame Instagram live. And I believe on Monday, I will be doing that with them. So if you listen to this before Monday, go and check that out. I don't know what time it is, but if you follow them at the Dumpster Dive Podcast account on Instagram, you'll be able to get all that information. But besides that, I hope I talk to you guys on Wednesday. Bye-bye. The reality is, is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Tracy Newman. My presence is a gift, so remember the thank you note. Lily. Some people say I'm too much, but she's just starting. Marl Farsi. Reading is fundamental, and in Farsi, the reads are monumental. Tracy Masters. When you're the master of your own destiny, no one can take you down. Amanda Agosti. Some Amandas are tech spots, but this Amanda is as real as it gets. Ade Ade Dokun. It may look like I'm stirring the pot, but actually I'm just smoking it. Paula Bretrude. If you think I'm a bitch, you're probably right, and you probably deserved it. Lola Del Rio. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets, and I get it all. Naveen Jonathan. I'll give you the shirt off my back, and also by unsolicited opinion. Jada. People are intimidated by my great success and my great ass. Deepa Kanapoli. Some people say I have secrets, but at least they're not federal indictments. Hadil Ibrahim. Some things are too hot to handle, like me and the tea I spill. Srinidhi Subramaniam. I have four degrees, eight syllables, and zero Fs to give. Shannon Anthony. There's no fun in moderation, but there's plenty of shade. Brianna Tooney. Some people strive for perfection, but I'm already there. Rita Ryan. Don't be fooled by my Midwest charm, because I'm nobody's fool. And finally, Beth Bayer. The secret to my success is staying out of your BS. 